Okay guys, we're going to do a wee pin board today. This is your S3 project. Now it's a very simple wee project. It's just involving some various joints. So making sure that you get the joints cut well, fitting well and laid out in the correct place. Now you can see here, I've got four parts of the wood. You've got top rail, a left and a right rail and a bottom rail. And we'll look at these individually. When we go through this, the teacher will put the, the drawing up on the board for you for each of these parts, but we'll treat them all as one part just now. Now, the first thing we're always going to do when it comes to this is mark your face and edge. This is critically important so that you don't get your pieces mixed up. Okay, so your face and edge mark, you should be aware, is going to be from this edge, draw a loop, and on the, so, sorry, on that face, draw a loop, and on the edge, draw a V. So that comes down from there. So that's face and edge. Get that done right away. So you can see I've done some of these earlier. So there's face and edge, face and edge, face and edge. Now you can see I've put my initials on there and I've put right hand rail, base rail, left hand rail. And for this one, put my initials and I'm putting top rail, okay? So always get into the habit of making sure that your face and edges are all marked because it's important that you keep things going the right way. Things don't end upside down, back to front and the wrong way around, okay? So get that done. First thing to do, get all that marked. Now we're going to focus on one rail in particular. We're going to focus on the top rail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these rails out of the way. And I'm going to mark this one. Now to do that, I need various tools. I need this tool here, which is a tri-square for marking our lines square to an edge. I need my steel rule for transferring my sizes, always in millimetres. And I need a marking gauge so that I can mark how far down I am in the wood. Okay, so there's your marking gauge with your four parts, your stock, your stem, your spur, and your thumb screw. So, You'll see the drawing, the drawing will be put up on the board for you and you'll see that on the top rail, the joint is actually on the back. So again, this is why it's important to know where your face is. What we're going to do is we're going to flip it over and we're going to do the sizes on the back. Now, again, referring to the drawing, you'll see that the first part of the joint is 25 millimetres in, followed by another 25 millimetres, so 50 overall. Now, the easiest way to do that, take a tri-square, hold it tight against the edge. There's no point in doing it like that. It doesn't, isn't square. So make sure it's held tight. Then if you take your steel rule, slide your tri-square along until your first mark is at 25. And you'll see that on the drawing, 25 mil. Nice sharp pencil, one crisp line. The next space is another 25 or 50 overall. So again, using your tri-square, hold that to the mark, 50 mil, nice clean mark. Now this is the bit we're going to remove. So right away what I like to do is mark my hatching lines or my waist wood lines. So that's at one end. The other end is exactly the same. So turn it round, do exactly the same. So 25 mil in, mark that. Slide your tri-square back until it's another 25 or 50 overall. Mark that, and again, mark your waist wood lines. Okay, so that's the joint, but the joint is coming down halfway. So I need to take my tri-square again, and I'm going to mark my lines down about halfway. So I'm going to do that for all the sides. Take my time to make sure it's nice and sharp, nice and in line, everything lines up. Okay, so do that there. Now you only need to go just over halfway, just over halfway so that you can see it, okay? So I've marked them just over halfway. Now I know my wood is 20 mil and I need to set my marking gauge to half of that, so 10 mil to the point, okay? So just going to slacken that off slightly, slide that up till it's at 10, right on the point. 
So it's 10 mil right on the point. Tighten that up and check it. So that's still at 10. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now, from the wastewood side, always do it the same side so there's any errors, it doesn't creep in. What you should do is take your pin and stick it in there at the bottom. So you make a wee mark. Then, keep your tri your, um, marking gauge tight against the side. Just draw a line. Scratch a line. Mark that right away. And then, mark your wastewood lines. Okay? So same again. If you put a wee stopper there, stab it in. That helps when you slide it down. It stops in that wee hole. You hear it clicking in? That means it won't slide all the way down and scratch your wood. So again, marking that, waste wood lines. Okay, so that's that one done. Do exactly the same on the other side, the other end. There, there. There, there. So that's my top rail marked out. Okay, that's it done. So when it's lying there, face and edge, joints on the back. Okay, so that's done. Put that to one side. Now you can see I've already marked that before. So I've got my face and edge, face, edge mark is facing the face and edge mark of the top rail. I've got base to identify it and I've got my initials on it. You're going to refer to the drawing on the board to get your sizes. I'm going to mark it out just now. So the first thing we've got at this end is a dowel. Now the dowel is going to be drilled right in the centre. Now the best way to find the centre is if you put your wood in the vise and you take your steel rule and you go across the diagonals. So corner to corner, put a mark. So a bit like a Scotland flag, draw right across, okay? Corner to corner, draw a mark. Now, that gives me my center point. And I would drill that down. Teacher will show you how far you need to drill that down. But basically, you're going to drill a dowel hole down there. Now the dotted lines represents hidden detail which you can't actually see, but we know is there. So that would be drilled down there and the dowel inserted in. The other end, slightly different. The joint here is a mortise and tenon, part of a mortise and tenon joint, and we're going to do the tenon part. So this part's coming in 20 mil. So take your steel, your tri-square again, hold it tight against the wood, use your rule, slide it along, you get your 20 mil. And we're going to mark that all the way around this time okay all the way around making sure the lines all join up nice and even okay so take your time mark that round and you can see all the lines line up okay and I'm going to put that back down the way it should be face up edge facing the way my name facing me that's where the tenon is going to go now the tenon is three parts. So we've got one, two, three sections. Now we need to split that into a third, okay? So we can just use a simple, we can use a marking gauge. If the wood's 20, if we split that, it's just less than, it's just over six. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set it at six and I'm going to let the middle section go. So I'm going to mark six there. So again, I've marked my marking gauge at six mil. You can see that there. So from both sides, I'm going to mark 6mm. So again, hold this in the vise if you need to. Hold it in your hand, so it's whatever's easiest for you. And then you're going to carefully mark round the three sides, 6mm. Take your pencil, in that line that you've marked, mark that, mark that. And then this is coming away. So right away, mark your waste wood. You know that's coming away, okay? Do the same at the other side. 
So six mil. Six mil. Six mil. Mark that again. So a tenon is always a third. So it doesn't matter what your thickness of your wood is, you always make it a third. So if your wood was 30 mil thick, this would be 10, 10 and 10. Okay? If your wood was 60 mil thick, 20, 20, 20. If it was 18, it'd be 6, 6 and 6. Okay? So that's that part marked. Now, I'm going to lay that back down the way it should be, face up, edge there. Now this 10 has a bit of a cut on it, so it's, it's not a full 10, it's not the full width, okay? You'll see that by the drawing. Now what you'll notice is that the actual tenon part here is only 15. Okay, so the wood there at the minute is 25. We only want 15. Okay, tenon is not a full depth tenon, it's only 15. So the best way to do that is to take your marking gauge. Now the width of the wood just now is 25. So we're going to set our marking gauge to 15. Okay, and then from the edge, we're going to mark 15. Okay, so down there, parallel line, across there. So this part here, I'm going to draw that in there. Now that wee bit in the middle is the bit we're going to keep. This bit is going to come away, ultimately. So that actually will come all the way as well. So if you can imagine the hidden line coming down there, hidden line, coming down there, and it's that bit of the tenon that we're going to keep, okay? Your teacher will help you with that if you're finding that a wee bit difficult. But basically the bottom half's coming away, or the bottom portion is coming away, and the top half is staying, and the sides are coming off, and we're going to leave that wee tenon there, okay? So that's that one done, lay that to one side. The next one is the right hand rail, and again, I've marked right hand, my name, and my facing edge. And that's the position of where it will be on the final model. So I'm getting into the habit of laying it out the way it's supposed to be. Okay, so the right hand side. Lay it down as I say, the way it's supposed to be. This time, what we're actually getting is the mortise coming in here. So this is going to join in here. So we're going to have a mortise joint here. And we're going to have a half lap here that will fit into this. Okay? So that's the two joints. So... First of all, we'll look at the mortise, which is here. Okay, so we've done the tenon, we've marked the tenon before on the rail, and now we're going to mark the mortise here. Now, the mortise comes up, the mortise comes up 25. So we're going to mark 25 there. Now that's the same width as your wood. So you can see there that my bottom rail comes against there and that's the size that I want, 25, okay? So you see I've got the line there like that? That's the line we want. Now the mortise itself is going to be here, and again, using the same, uh, sorry, change that to six, the same as we did before. So for the other side of the mortise, we're going to change this to six. And this time we're going to go from both sides, we're going to mark six, turn it round, mark six. Gently scratch that there. Okay, so that's that. And that's that. Now this time is the middle bit we're, this time it's the middle bit we're going to take away. But remember how this one only comes up 15. So it's not the full depth here, it's from the top down 15. So what we can do is we can mark 15. Square that across. In actual fact, the bit that we're going to remove is this bit in the middle. Okay? And we'll chisel that down to the depth of this, which again is 20 mil. So we'll come down 20 mil. And that one won't take us right through. So in effect, what we'll have is our mortise will look like that. Okay? So that's that one done. Now, Top part, if I lay my wood back down, facing edge, this is going to go in here, onto my top rail. So for that to work, I've removed the wood at the back, 
so I need to remove the wood from the top here. Okay? Now, the depth down is the width of the material, so it's 43. That's that there, okay? Now, you can actually use the wood if you wanted to give you your mark, put a wee mark there, or you can measure down 43. So, 43 is there, mark that. Now, this bit we're taking away. So we're taking all that away, and then we're making it, it's a half lap, so we're coming down halfway, halfway, and then we're going to gauge this. So the wood are ready, so we can remember the size was 20. So again, set the marking gauge to 10. Tighten it, check it. 10 and from this face mark a line 10 there 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 now hold that device if you need to I've got big hands I can hold it no problem but if you're struggling to hold it put it in the vise and then mark your lines that you've just gauged okay and again this bit's coming away all across there and there so that's going to create this half lap, which will go in here. So the top half will come away on my side rail, bottom half away on my top rail, and the two of them will fit together. Okay? So that's that rail done. So the last rail, again, is coming in here. So it's going to be the same joint, exactly the same as that on this side. Okay? So, I'll quickly mark that again. If you want, you can use that as a copy to help you. Now I'm going to lose my initials, so I'm just going to put them down there. And again, gauging it halfway. There. 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 Mark your pencil line. Okay, and the waste wood is the same as this one on that face. Okay, so that's going to go into that joint there. The bottom one. This is our bottom rail with the face up, edge in, so it's all the faces are up, all the edges are in. Final one is our dowel, which is going to go in there. Now the way we would do this is we drill this hole, we put a dowel marker in, and we press that against there. But basically, what it is, is the same as this. So we've got a mark there, the same width as our wood. I'm going to square that across, there. And my, my diagonals now are from here, to there and across and that's going to give them a centre. So this is going to give you an idea where it is, but you're better using the dowel pin to mark it accurately. Because if your centre hole on this one is out a wee bit, when you use the dowel marker, it will actually mark it properly. So in effect, what you're going to have is your dowel will be in there and that will get the glue together. So there's your joints all done, all marked out for your flat frame. Okay guys? So guys, that's all your joints marked out. And whenever you're doing this, check them individually. There'll be probably an exemplar like this at the front of the room that your teacher can check for you. You can check against it yourself, double check your sizes on the drawing, but don't cut anything until the teacher tells you. So once you've got it all marked out exactly like this, then the teacher will probably tell you to go ahead and start cutting. And again, cut each one individually. So cut this joint, this joint, whatever. You know, don't just try to be a bit more methodical in what you're doing rather than just being random and cutting things all over the place. So a wee recap of the tools that we're going to use. So we have your steel rule for marking out your sizes, your tri-square for marking lines square to an edge or a face, and your marking gauge for marking lines parallel to an edge.